I finally found it, the perfect time tracking software for freelancers. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you why that is and the best bit, it costs just $1 per month. Stay tuned. It's called Team Logger. Now I put a link down below, you can grab it and obviously you can see it for yourself. But this tool we have been using for the last couple of months and it's absolutely changed the game for us. Okay, so right now I'm actually logged into my own Team Logger and I'm gonna walk you through all the settings. You can have a look through and see what it looks like actually in operation. Um, what I will say is I'll blur some information so just be mindful of that. So to start off with, up here we're up on screenshots and um, it does adjust to the time zones. Like my team are based out in the Philippines and I'm in Mexico City, that's really useful. And you can see here like the activity and they talk about when it was active and when they were like on a break and also as well, like they have meeting mode. So we use that as well. You can see like dropping down the, the employees, but also as well, you can select the date. It will only show you the screenshots from one date. And you can also see down here, like the time. So like 101, 03, 04, 06, they do randomize them. They're not exactly every two minutes. It's kind of like randomized. And you can also see like activity sessions down here like actually how active. So if you're looking, maybe you're doing some investigation into what's happening, you can definitely see in the activity of each kind of like screenshot period, if you want to dive in, maybe where that 100% activity level is. If we click on this one, you can see, bang, we can just see clicking through and we can see those screenshots, what's going on. So I think that's really, really useful and very helpful there. Now, the one thing, a couple of things here, you've got like view screenshots, you've got project screenshots. So like when people log into different projects, you can group them across projects or like per user, you can also download them. I'm guessing kind of like in bulk. So you can kind of choose them if you wanted to. So you can do edit time. So if you say as a member of staff, you want to edit their times, so you can do that, that's fine. You can also manage their leaves. And for us within our business, we don't do that at all. Um, you know, we don't manage, leave is not managed through this tool, um, but we'll, we can do it if we wanted to. We also have like time approvals. So you can kind of, you know, if people want to have certain times approved or not approved, we can do that like changes. But it's not something that we do. Again, this is really just for reporting, not managing if that makes sense. So you can do like user timelines, you can have a kind of look down of like, what did this user do on a certain period, which is really, really helpful. So you could again, this is kind of very much like that timeline that we had before. You can do the summary report. So you can see uh, like all employees on a different work day and kind of having a quick look through, generate report, uh, see what's happening. So nothing there. Uh, 30 users not logged in. So again, we're kind of like looking at hours, attendance counts, employee timesheets if you want to use it, projects, hourly pay reports. We generally don't use a lot of them. I think the only one we really kind of use is uh, if I just do, I think it's daily hours report. Now this is the one that we use the most. Uh, I kind of do the workday here, but it's basically all employees and um, we'll generally do like Sunday to Saturday or Monday to Saturday, because in my time, Monday is technically Sunday in their time because the Philippines. And again, the one thing we're looking at is total time worked. We're looking at really the active seconds. That's what we're going to be going through. Certain members of my team are going to be very managerial. So the active seconds, i.e. mouse clicks, is going to be a lot lower. Some of them are very operational. They're going to have much higher active seconds and we'll see that as well. And what we've done is we've set it up so that actually it doesn't include inactive time. So if someone goes inactive for more than two minutes, it will now actually say, hi, are you still there? They click yes, and then that's absolutely fine. But they can also turn on meeting mode. For example, you can see down here, you know, this member of staff had quite a bit of time, like 17 minutes whereby they are in, or seven minutes where they are inactive. So this is the one that we really use and we're really tracking this active seconds. Now there's a lot of other options on here. You can set up different projects and tasks. And I think generally within our business, we generally don't do too much. They have a lot of different projects, but we just say, look, don't, don't use the projects. It's not something we're after. You've got administration. And what I will talk about is we'll kind of go through there. So you can set up all your different users. You can set up all the different projects if you want. You can set up your leave policies, uh, like billing, for for example, if you want to see again, like how you do your billing, you can see it all there as well. Uh, that's super, super helpful. And again, you can like choose your country. Uh, it's not the best and I'll talk about this in a minute. The idea is you can see what's kind of going on and how they set that up. Uh, they also have like burst credits, burst users and premium users, uh, restricted timings, daily minimum hours emailed work. So if someone works too little, we can automatically email them, for example, late if someone turns up late. Uh, they actually have an API, which I think is very, very interesting. 
So what you can do is you can actually connect your own software into this, which I think is fascinating. And if you want to develop that, and I think that's absolutely incredible, like especially for the price you're paying, it's not really gonna happen. In addition to that, what you can do, what else have they got? Silent mode, we don't use silent mode, but that's where it like sits in the back and watches everything. We want it to be very kind of, uh, we want to work with everyone. They also have like integrations, so they can integrate with Zapier. Um, right now we've not used that, I've not tested it, so I'm not really too sure what that does, but it might be worth asking if you are looking at it. And in addition to that, I'll also just have a quick look through uh, company settings because there's lots of different settings in here which you might want to know. So default for all new users, what do we do? So timer settings, we basically say um, we don't track when they're timed out because we don't want to. If you're not there, we're not going to track it so we don't turn it. We enable meeting mode so people can click on like, hey, I'm in a meeting mode, that's fine. And we also say that if they're inactive for five minutes, it will automatically go inactive. Uh, in addition to this, we like keep title, keep idle timeout and screenshots on idle, allow timer to run the schemes temporarily locked, recommended, always connected, not recommended, we tick that, allow users to quit the application completely. Definitely, if they're using their own computer, we want that and automatically start timer. So again, you can see that very, very useful. Now, we've also got down here, management positions. So you can kind of see there's some options there. We're not really using that. Screen capture is quite a big one. We have the, the ability to disable them. We have burst mode. So it costs an extra two credits per user. That's one credit equals $2. So we do interval every two minutes. You can actually get a 30 seconds, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, you can also do what's known as random. They have the random adjustments. So it's not exactly every two minutes on the minute. It will do random adjustment, but also you can blur them if you want. So like you can have the screenshots blurred. You can deny viewing so your team members can't see it you can allow them deleting and you can deduct time when screenshots are deleted so hey if you deleted it we're not going to count that time in um, so for us we just say when you're in work you're in work that's it you're not doing personal stuff editing you can allow your team members to edit time and that's something that you can do projects and tasks we don't really use projects and tasks too much but it is an option leave settings again we don't use it for leave but it's up to you if you want to you can track applications and website usage so again, you can see what's going on and they do need to install a, an application. Also as well, they have like how your time zones worked out. So my team technically start on a Monday at four o'clock and they're in the Philippines at so eight plus. And you can see like all the different settings we've got there. Uh, you can do webcam capture. So if you're interested in having a team member, if you want to go like, are they actually there or is it them? Is it someone else? So you can get the webcam to turn on every time it takes a screenshot, which is really, really interesting. So you can do that as well. Uh, you can do data viewing permissions, again, seeing all that. Um, and then also as well, you can see like disable email reports and deny account management, not recommended. So that's quite interesting. You've got billing information, default projects. So you can set, you can set up default projects. You can set up branding if you want, time and attendance thresholds. So like we expect a full hour is eight hours, so that's for us. Reporting columns, so you can kind of see this. Uh, we want this, you'll see active seconds in your column report. We want that one because that's gonna show the mouse movement on the, the thing, that's really important. Leaves we don't use. Email settings, so you can send reminders or report. And then also as well, you can have a capture blacklist, which I really like, I think is a great setting. Why, let's say for example, you've got a team member who does banking, for example, and they have to log into banking. You might wanna make sure that those applications or maybe those websites are not being checked or, or screen captured because other people might see the banking information. So I think that's quite useful or perhaps maybe sensitive information. So that's really, really helpful there. So that's pretty much it uh, across us. And the couple of things that I really love about it are they have the API feature I think is incredible. Like no one normally gives that. You get the two minute screenshots, you can get the meeting mode, the activity tracker, and we're even looking at, should we say, the Zapier integration. Time tracking tools are absolutely amazing. But before you get time tracking tools, think about building a team. And the one thing that you're gonna need if you're thinking about building a team, or even hiring freelancers or even remote staff, such as in the Philippines, like we do, then you're gonna need to write a contract, which is gonna be an agreement between you and the person about what they need to do for the amount of money you're gonna pay them. Now, getting this right can actually be a nightmare and also as well it takes a lot of time so that's why we've put together a free contract and job description that we use within our own business and i'll drop a link down below you can get that and i think you'll really like it let's talk through pricing now this is the one point that i love about this software as i said at the very beginning it's just one dollar per user per month in my business i have 40 staff last year we had 80 and when you're looking at some of the other competitors in the space you are looking to pay probably close to 10 15 maybe even 20 dollars per user per month which starts to add up considerably 
monthly. But $1 per user per month, I think is absolutely incredible. And I absolutely love that pricing point. You can't get wrong. I did say there were some caveats and what are they? Well, if you want to increase the screenshots and I mentioned it earlier, they by default go to the, the highest frequency is 30 minutes, once every 30 minutes. But if you actually want to increase that, you can actually get it down to every two minutes for an additional 50 cents. And this actually includes those webcam photos as well. If you want to go additionally even further, you can actually get it down from two minutes down to 30 seconds. I think that will cost you an additional $1 per user per month. So for our business, we pay the $1 per user per month plus the 50 cents extra to get the screenshots every two minutes. So that's how we operate. What are some of the problems? Well, let me explain some of the issues that we've seen that I'll be honest about, but they're not really big issues. The first one, which is really the only issue we had, is the fact that their payment processing is quite clunky. They only accept PayPal. And what you have to do is you have to buy tokens. So one token is $1. And then you exchange those tokens for users using the tool. What they'll do is they'll just use up the token around. So you kind of hold money on their system in tokens, and then they'll use it up. There is no auto pay at the moment, which seems a bit stupid. Like you have to manually go in and top up, which is what we do. And we'll actually do that once every few months because it's really not that much money. But it would be nice to see an auto pay feature in there. And even perhaps the fact that it could just pull directly from your bank account, depending on usage. Like I would be really happy with that. The token system doesn't really seem like it's necessary, but I can understand it's at $1 per, she say token and $1 per user. It's like nothing. So I'm not really complaining too much. Now you might be asking Tom, $1 per user. This has got to be one of the least supported products I've ever seen in my life. How can anyone run a business like this? Well, actually, I'm going to tell you not. My ops manager has been interrogating, using this, getting feedback on it throughout, her, she say, the last couple of months. Now, what's been really interesting and what I've really enjoyed is the fact that pretty much every single week, she found like maybe a little problem or like left the time tracking on over the weekend in meeting mode to see if it kind of, she could make it look like she was working because she wanted to see how she can hack it. And what was really interesting is every time she found a problem, she fed it back to the devs and usually within a week to two weeks, they had already done an update, which I thought was absolutely incredible. The company's based out in India and I've not heard a single complaint from my operations manager in regards to like the speed of the feedback in regards to supporting the product. And it looks like they're developing it all the time. Time tracking software is great. But the one thing I will say is that all the time tracking software in the world will not solve the problem of a bad hire. All it's going to do is show you actually how bad of hire maybe you made. And don't get me wrong, I have made many bad hires in my life. This is why I created the Fast Track FBA VA Academy, whereby we have trained over 750 virtual assistants to support our clients in their businesses. And what we do is we have over a thousand applicants every single week and we are filtering them down and making sure that we are only hiring the top, top talent. And what we're doing is placing these with our clients and supporting them for a whole 12 weeks. If they are not happy with that VA, they can get a replacement at any point over the 12 weeks. And that's for a one-time payment fee. If you are interested and want to know more about how you can get a top talent from the Fast Track FBA VA Academy. I'll drop a link down below. Check it out. Right, let's talk about setup and installation. Okay, so here we are. Just got the email come through and it's just that. It's like a team logger invite. So I'm going to click that invite and what it's going to ask you to do is, should we say, enter my username and password. Just logged in now and uh, obviously you've got the options here so you can download 64-bit, 32-bit. Pretty much everyone's going to be Windows 64-bit, but obviously you've got Mac client, you've got Linux, Ubuntu, Linux Fedora, and even Chromebook. So that's really, really good. So I'm going to download this actual kind of file. So we'll just download that now. We'll wait for that to finish. You can see it's just kind of downloaded here. So download in progress, done. Let's click on that and let's get it installed. Okay, so once you're logged in, you can see up here we've got like default project. Now you can add a project in if you want, like sourcing, deal purchasing. But to be honest, I'm not really too bothered. I'm, like, I'm not interested in that level of granularity. And all I just want them to do is track time. That is it, nothing else. So you can even do like tasks if you want to, but we're just not really interested. So you can see here we've got like refresh if you want to refresh the information, my details, reports, but I haven't started the timer yet. And it's got this kind of like thing down the bottom. So you can see here I've got zero for the day. I've got status if I want to do like working from office working from home, out of office, any projects I want to search for. Like, again, I'm not really interested in any of that. All I'm interested in is log in when I'm ready, start the timer. That's it. And what you're going to notice, and I can literally just minimize that, this little timer is going to pop up here. I can click hide if I want, get rid of it. But most of my staff will generally just sit there and have that running. That's absolutely fine. For me, like when we're going through, I'm just going to carry on with my day. And what it's going to do is it's just going to, should we say, take screenshots every two minutes or however often you've done it. Should we say the settings in the, in the admin section as we're going through, 
through, it, it really doesn't do anything. It will just sit there. Now, if I don't do anything for about two minutes, it will pop up and say, hey, are you still there? And if you don't reply, if you don't go, yeah, I'm still here. And every two minutes, it will do that. If you don't click that, it will then basically automatically sign you out or like turn off the timer, which I think is only fair because if you're not at the computer and you're not working, then it's fine. In two minutes, you can you know, pop to the toilet, you can you know, grab a coffee. Like, that's absolutely fine. The other one you can do here is like take a break. So if my team members want to have this break, like absolutely fine. If you want to go like, yeah, I'll have some lunch. Cool. Take a break. Stop the timer. That's fine. So we're stopping the timer. And then when we're ready again, we can start again. Not a problem. That's really simple. Now, the other one you might have is when you're in meetings. So you're not really going to move very much. So what we have is what's known as meeting mode. So you can literally start meeting mode. And that's basically just going to keep you logged in. But it's not going to do activity, should we say. It won't track the activity level during because you're not supposed to be very active doing that. But when you finish meeting mode, click end meeting mode. And then obviously you're back into normal working mode, should we say. So we have those two kind of settings, which we use just for meetings and one for obviously normal day-to-day -day activity. Now, once you're finished, really simple. You're just going to click punch out and you're like, absolutely fine. Now I can kind of come in and like, should we say, see my, I, I can go to like my reports, for example. I'm going to see if I can log in here. So you can see here, I've just logged in. So as a user, this is what I can actually see. So I can see like Tom test, he logged in. He's got inactive minutes, active seconds, how much time I worked. And I can click on my like timeline, for example, and I can actually go in and see my own data, which is really, really useful. So I can see here like what's going on. You can see like uh, I've got two screens. So I've got one screen, which is what we're showing right here. And I've got the other screen, which right now you can see that I'm doing the recording of this she say thing right now. So you can see that right there. Absolutely fantastic. So it does take both screens. I really like that. And obviously you've got the thumbnails here so you can see the detail. And if I'm like, hey, you know, you can see here like, oh my God, you know, if there's any problems, I can speak to my mind, line manager, say actually delete that or like say there's a problem. But obviously don't be signed in. Don't do banking while you're signed in, should you say. But that's really simple. I can even see latest screens, update, but I'm not logged in now. I can see, you know, what's going on. Like I can manage my screenshots. I can look at my leaves. We don't manage leaves. I can look at time approvals. I look at my reports, download anything if I want to. It's quite simple. And the idea is, is like for the value for money you're getting is incredible, but also that that's how we set it up and that's how the users see it when they're logged in. And they can even see their own data and get a really good idea of like what's going on within their day to day. And this creates that nice timeline. You can see like what's happening. Are you all working mode or meeting mode? That's pretty much it. It's team logger and absolutely love it. Right. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. And hey, do check out the Fast Track FBAV Academy if you want to see more. I look forward to working with you in the future.